Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Monica, and here is her story. I know my mom is a narcissist, but I can't put my finger on who my dad is. His impulsive, violent, irresponsible, interruptive, childlike behavior suggests to me that he has some sort of ADHD. He ticks every box there is on a list of symptoms and possibly BPD. He does not strike me as a narcissist like my mom is. Perhaps you will spot something that I am missing, though I realize the stories are short and and there is and there is hardly anything to go on. I hope that's not too much for you to read on your channel. Thanks for your time. Take care, Monica. And what Monica did, she sent in two stories that are on flashbacks on paper about food that she wanted me to read, and they're pretty short. So <clears throat> here's the first one. Food part one. In the last six months before moving abroad to join mom and dad, I'm sorry. In the last six months before moving abroad to join mom, my dad was left in charge of everything. Cleaning house, paying bills, grocery shopping, etc. As soon as mom left, dad made an executive decision of saving the money by simply not paying the rent or any bills and coercing the government into receiving child support because he was a single parent without a job. I soon realized my dad had no idea how to run a household. In those six months, I was fed the strangest dishes ever. A freezer cold fish fingers for breakfast. Just fucking eat it. Room temperature fried chicken for evening tea. Fried fish that was still frozen in the middle. If you don't like it, you don't get to eat. A plate of raw potatoes. There's nothing wrong with it. I cooked it for 15 minutes, so eat it. An unidentifiable watery soup with the same still uncooked potatoes from the day before. My dad pretended to try to cook for me and my sibling, and he achieved it by just never getting it right. It was cold food right off the frying pan all the way. He fed himself well enough, though. He knew how to make two things, sandwiches and how to boil an egg. The food was so bad and unedible, the school I went to started to pay for my lunches. And my other grandma, who never gave two shits about me, would take turns with my grandma, who, have, who always have fed me on the weekends, to feed me a proper dinner. One of the ways my parents abused me was through food. I was fed starvation rations. There was plenty of food in the house. The fridge and the cupboards were overflowing with healthy, tasty food. However, none of it was for me. If I tried to eat anything out of the fridge, my parents would punish me from, for stealing from them. Here's what my childhood daily diet looked like. Breakfast consisted of a slice of bread with some butter on it, a cup of tea, and half-eaten tasteless yogurt. My dad would eat the first half to be mean. I don't like eating yogurt to this day. School lunch, a sandwich with a tomato in it. When I complained about soggy, soaky sandwiches, I was no longer given lunch for school. Evening dinner, approximately 12 hours after breakfast, a slice of bread with a single slice of cheese on it and a glass of milk. I had to find different ways to supplement my diet. I learned to ration my pocket money to buy sugary things at the shop. In retrospect, it's not the healthy, it's healthiest thing to do. However, I needed to up my calorie intake in any way I could. On weekends, my grandma would feed me all, feed me all, all day long. However, on some days, I would be so depressed as a child I couldn't eat anything. My grandma would beg me to eat because she was worried how skinny I was. When it was time to go back home, my grandma would give me food to take home with me so I have something to eat other than two slices of bread. During the week, grandma would call the house phone to check on me. On Monday, she would ask if I'd eaten at lunchtime. The answer would always be no. She would remind me about the food from the weekend and explain to me how to reheat it. On the other days, she would also call to check if, if parents had fed me. The parents would always, the answer would always be no, to which my grandma would say, I will send grandpa over with a nice cooked meal, the ones you like. Grandma would always give me something sweet to eat. 
that I could take home with me. She was aware that my parents would confiscate certain types of food, not because they cared for my health, but because they wanted it for themselves. One of those were blocks of chocolate. She would tell me to hide it under my pillow and never eat it in front of my parents. Did your grandparents ever confront your parents? No, because half the food that went back went to the, went into their stomachs anyway. So, I mean, I can appreciate that you thought your grandmother was doing you a favor somehow, but, you know, she's she's allowing you to get abused and knows how your diet is, knows they're not feeding you. Should she call anybody? Does she confront your parents? Like, what's your fucking problem? I understand the eating thing. The food thing, the, 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 the control through food, because my mother did it to me. I was a skinny nothing growing up. Nothing. I was 85 pounds going into my freshman year in high school. Because when I was alone, my mother wouldn't feed me. In front of dinner, she'd make me into like some kind of fucking glutton. <clears throat> oh, look at him. Look at him. Just being... And to this day, I have an unhealthy relationship with food. Look, your father probably acted like that because he was scamming the government and he wanted to make you look as poor and destitute as possible. That he knew how to do. And once he did that, he learned he could pretty much control, control through food and your mother picked up on it as well. My question is, where was your grandmother? Yeah, your grandmother's trying to sneak you food, and your grandfather's trying to sneak you food, but is she doing anything to make sure? Why? Why is she not confronting your your parents? Why is she not calling the authorities? Why isn't she not you? Why are they not taking custody of you and your and your sibling? They're allowing you to be starved on a daily basis. They're not doing you any favors. Your grandmother didn't. Do you any favors? There's so much more she could have done and she didn't do it. Why? Why? Both your grandmothers apparently knew. So it's both their kids. They know. And we know narcissism. It's handed down. So I wouldn't be giving either one of your sets of grandparents a pass on either of this shit. Okay? Because they're major players in, in the entire thing. So, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution and, and your story, Monica. I really appreciate it. Oh, no.